Butter, half a pound of cocoa, packet of Marie Louise biscuits, tin of rice pudding, tin of strained apricots, dog food, cat food, ciggies. Uh, excuse me. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Bag of self-raising flour, custard powder, black currant yogurt. Uh, excuse me, I, I have it rather a hurry. Will you shut your face? I'm trying to add up. <laughs> packet of wheat crispies, packet of rice flakies, packet of cat crunchies, and an egg to go to work on. That should do it. <laughs> oh, hello, love. Oh, you look fed up. I've just been going through the books. Oh, dear. Is business still dropping? I don't understand it. Week after week. We've been here three months, and each week we've taken less than the last. It's funny, because the people we bought it off said it was a little gold mine. I know. It defeats me, and I don't know where we're going wrong. We're offering personal service, competitive prices, tip-top attention. Excuse me, could I pop? Get out. Me? I'm busy. <laughs> I don't know where we're slipping up. Can't put my finger on it. Do you think it might be the chain store down the road? I don't know. You see, maybe we're understaffed. I mean, this fellow that just went out. We could have served him if we hadn't been so busy. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, the trouble is they're always in such a flaming hurry round here. That's the trouble. No, it's not only that. In this soulless age of supermarkets, people are prepared to wait because they get that extra little bit of personal service. Do you think our approach might be wrong? Well, I was wondering that myself. All right, let's examine it. For example, what do you say when someone comes in the shop? I oh, say what I've always said. I say, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> what do you want? Sounds reasonable enough. I can't fault it. <laughs> it's clear, simple, direct. Yeah. What do you say? Well, don't say very much at all, really. I wait for them to have a good look round, and then I say, come on, I've got all day. <laughs> well, that seems fair enough. Do you think we might be just a little bit too abrupt? You know, it's funny you should say that. I've been wondering that myself. I mean, shouldn't we sort of greet them in some sort of way? How do you mean? Well, like, say it's morning and a woman comes in. You could say, for example, good morning, madam. I get it. I'm with you. And if it's afternoon and it's a fella, you say, good afternoon, sir. That's yeah. it. Oh, well, anything's worth a try. Yeah. Good morning, madam. Good morning, madam. Good morning. What are you, one? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> what do we do to her? 
<laughs> oh, I don't think she was going to buy love. I think she was just going to have a look around. No, no. I've got a sixth sense about these things. Something upsets her all right. Some little stray word or phrase that flicked her on the raw. No. Oversensitive, that's what it is. I mean, if we'd insulted her, I could have understood it. I mean, like the day when that vicar came in and you said, Get your thieving hands off them biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were wrong there, Jack, because he was definitely going to pay for it. Huh. So he said, We can do without this type. No, it's the ordinary decent customer I'm thinking about. Are we offering that degree of civility and courtesy to which he's entitled from the small shopkeeper? I think so. Well, I think so as well. Mm. Still, improvement must be on the motto. I'll tell you what, let's have a rehearsal, eh? All right, then I'll be a customer and I'll come in yeah. and you serve. I will see if there's any flaws in our approach. Right, well. Good morning, madam. Shut that flaming door. Oh. <laughs> right, what do you want? Well, uh... uh come on, come on, come uh, on. A packet of toasted crunchies. Yeah. Thank you. How much is that? Can't you read? Look on my flaming packet. Oh, there you are. Thank you very much. Haven't you got any less? No, I'm afraid I haven't. All right, here you are. Now get out. Oh. <laughs> well, I think that went very well. <laughs> I mean, very good. You made a sale. Had you any complaints as a customer? No, no, none at all. Highly satisfied. I mean, I would be a regular customer here. Well, can't be me then. We've proved that. Do you think it might be you? Could be. Let's have a go. All right. What do you want? Back in the cigars, please. Take them. <laughs> well? It's perfect. Speed, efficiency, what more do they want? <laughs> I'll tell you, if things don't improve, we'll pack it in. Well, we could always go back on the buses. You work, you slave, you drive yourself into the ground for public service and all the things. Is it to serve me or not? I haven't got all day. What do you want? Cake. What cake? Cream cake. Here. Wrap it. We don't wrap cakes. I said wrap it. We ain't got no paper. Get some. I'll come back later. And if you don't give me a wrap case, I'll smash your face in. <laughs> Meanwhile... <laughs> Did you hear that? He said he was going to come back later. Our first regular customer. We never got past Stockport. I said we never got past Stockport. So once again I retired, hung up my dancing shoes and went home to mother. Then suddenly my luck changed. I was asked to appear in cabaret at the Waldorf Astoria. The Waldorf Astoria Bootle. <laughs> mean to me, why must you be mean? Darling, but can't you see? I'm all alone and crying. <coughs> you treat me coldly each day of the year. So I went home to mother again. And then at last, my real break. A chance to appear on television. A roll of drums, an out I strolled, a star at 